Okay, so a very warm welcome to all of our listeners here at Radio Maria Ireland. Um, I'm very delighted to be to announce that we have a new show uh, starting now with uh, Sam. Sam, you're very welcome uh, into the station. Thank you very much for having me again. For sure. Um, and so obviously you were on Encounter a couple of weeks ago, so some people might recognise you. Um, and this new show is going to be about psychology, which is kind of your background. And, um, and so could you tell us a little bit about um, your background and... Yeah, how you've come to, to be a psychologist. 100%. Um, so I became a graduate psychologist after graduating in Edinburgh University in 2022. So since then I've been working with different clients personally, privately, but uh, right now my day-to-day -day job is working in an autistic unit. Uh, so with uh, adults with uh, inter intellectual disability. Okay. Yeah. And, and uh, yeah, yeah my, my, I suppose my interest in psychology started uh, from reading uh, Viktor Frankl, his book uh, Men's Searching for Meaning and also since 2017 when I really got into Jordan Peterson okay. so I say two of them are my biggest psych psychology heroes Okay, today. cool, yeah. very nice um, so that's kind of how you came into, and was it because it was a bit of a change from what you were doing previously so, yeah, um, I see there's still a, a Continuity. So I started uh, my undergrad degree in sociology and social policy, but I was always fascinated by the human mind and the human behavior, sure. and how we come to where we are, you know, as we journey through life, mm -hmm. um, and also in family, the dynamics, etc. Yeah, and we're kind of probably this this whole show is kind of looking at psychology from a Catholic perspective, mm. but briefly, what, like, what what is kind of Catholic psychology? Yeah. Yeah, one of the things that I really want to develop uh, in my career is to see, find a link between the faith and, and how it actually makes actual sense, real sense, um, in the sense that it's so deep that it is intrinsically related, right? Mm -hmm. So how faith teaches us um, how to behave, how to think, how to live your life. And that is, that eventually I think, in with psych with technology and with our human kind of uh, development, we can find there's absolutely empirical evidence of how our faith is actually totally. I suppose it's mapped out with how our psyche behaves, right? Sure, yeah. So, um, you know, especially the new atheists claim there's you know God is is delusion. So God is delusion. We should you know, Dawkins talk about it, but I want to see without God is absolute delusion. Mm -hmm. So that would I was I suppose like that's why I really you know feel deeply convicted of having this show is that to show that you know us Catholics here we are not following just a set of rules not even a principle mm -hmm. uh, but a person a relationship and uh, that is so deeply ingrained to our human psyche because mm -hmm. at the end of the day God became flesh and uh, he lived as a human as a man and for us men, homo sapiens, and we can follow that God and we mm -hmm. can absolutely become, well, I mean, we are a daughter, son of God. So I don't just want to map it out perfectly. Well, as perfect as we could ever. Yeah. But uh, just we just explore different ideas of how, you know, us. Yeah, sure. Yeah. And kind of one place that we can kind of branch off there, I suppose, is you mentioned that our faith is intrinsically, or psychology rather, is intrinsically linked with our faith. Um, which to me, it's, it, to someone who has absolutely no experience with psychology sounds a bit um, it, it just doesn't sound right because not everyone has the faith necessarily and so you know what, what, why is why is it that I have the faith and someone doesn't have the, someone else doesn't have the faith and like how does how does our sort of psychology differ if that makes sense yeah oh even start even earlier from well from Adam mm -hmm. <laughs> suppose We know that we are made in the image of God, right? But not many people know it. Well, why? I mean, practically, or well, pragmatically, because they don't, they was, th this wasn't revealed to them. And, uh, well, our law says it's not, you know, say to Peter, you know, Peter, Simon, you know, the son of Jonah, uh, it's not the earth that revealed to you, but, but my father who revealed to you. So I suppose at the end of the day, um, our faith is, is, it is a faith. Mm -hmm. So now what is, what is faith? What does faith really mean? Um, 
again, is it just a set of principles? Uh, is it something you proclaim, or is it uh, is it or is it a bit of both, mm -hmm. a mix of what how you behave and how you think, and how you act out of what you believe? Sure. So um, we <laughs> us as Catholics mm -hmm. um also depends on how informed we are in our faith we act differently mm -hmm. well because many people could say we are catholics but we don't actually act like catholics mm -hmm. and i suppose we're a bit of that you know um sometimes we are sinners you know catholics sin sinners we acknowledge that we are sinners that the try this the struggle is part of the journey to to us the heavenly father mm -hmm. so i suppose even people or, or friends without the faith he's trying to seek they're, they're, they're seeking right and um, this re really go back to the um, millennia's um, his, uh, of idea of um, of eudaimonia where Aristotle Aristotle you know pre, pre Christ for 300 years um, he had this idea of, of human flourishing eudaimonia mm -hmm. really vaguely translated to happiness mm -hmm. so he says everyone is looking for happiness. Everyone is seeking for happiness. Even St. Thomas Aquinas in Summa Theologia mm -hmm. talks about, um, you know, about sins. Like, why do we sin? Because we see part of the goodness in the sin itself. Sure. So we don't blind, we don't sin because um, we know it's evil, uh, but we kind of see part of it. So if we go in deeper, it's like how the, the, the gravity of the sin, it depends on the knowledge right we know that it has to be a model scene it has to be full knowledge mm -hmm. full intent and, and grave matter um so back to the the idea of, of sin is that you actually see part of the goodness in that action mm -hmm. well it could uh, you know all the all the commandments or idolatry or different things is that you see part of it like kind of a hint of nice good looking thing even yeah. I mean back to the original sin is it because the apple was good to mm -hmm. the eyes uh, you can't you can't resist it true so um, it's people without faith they're still seeking good mm -hmm. they want to be happy they want to flourish as a person uh, it's just a matter of how you journey through those um, let's say trials or navigation mm -hmm. of life sure differ yeah no I think you're right because there's there's such thing as like something that's that's there that's beautiful um, and just says good beauty but then there's also like bad beauty as well um, yeah. to look at it and I suppose when I, when I knowing that now like knowing that someone's um, someone's I suppose knowledge of the faith uh, translates to the way they should have lived out their faith as well how can I like let's say someone who is a college student how can I bring that into my daily college life with people that I know that haven't been brought up in the faith like I am um, like how do I know this person like he clearly or they clearly um, aren't as not like they aren't as well versed in the faith as I am and therefore are, are acting mm. in this way mm. um, and how can I use that to my advantage to you know tell them what, what is yeah. right it would sound cliche but really you have to see Christ in the person first of all well um, and we are we are human as well, right? We, we are not perfect. We are not there to because I suppose one of the biggest put off for people who don't want to, let's say, become a Catholic or you know, you know, convert to Christianity is that they they felt there's two kind of emotions or sentiments between them. Is that first you holier than thou, like you given that I'm holier than you and I'm better than you. I'm I'm almost persecuting you. Sure, yeah. Uh, the second is that well, it's just a set of examples, and you're trying to make me change my ways, mm -hmm. right? And that's always not the best place to start with. Mm -hmm. Um, the best place to start with is to see that human is trying to do good. It's very difficult. Um, but just imagine our Lord in the first thirty years. He's a uh, normal person in doing his carpentry, uh, having friends, you know, play, playing football, going out for food and all that. He's a normal normal person. Uh, letter of Dionysus mm -hmm. is one of the early Christians in the second century. He talked about Christians, you know, that's just post, let's say, conversion of the Roman Empire. 
or even sorry before that actually mm -hmm. to talk about how you know us Christians we, we're no differ we're no difference to the normal people in the world um, we live in the same country uh, we have we talk the same language and mm -hmm. uh, we behave the same but what's different to us is our hearts and how we see that we are sojourners on the earth we don't cling to our possession we love each other uh, in the way that we love well our Lord said that um, mm. I mean, if you want people to know you are my disciples, love, right? Mm -hmm. Almost like if you love more than, if you love your neighbors like yourself, sure, yeah. you even love others. The new commandment is, you love them as I have loved you. Yeah. So the love between the unity of Catholics mm. uh, would be the distinction, distinctive, uh, I suppose, benchmark of how we be uh, as a Christian. Yeah. And back to the context of, I say, university. Um, I suppose there's some s certain element within us want to rush apostolate, want to rush become a missionary. Mm -hmm. And uh, we, we hear about like heroic story of St. Ignatius uh, going to Asia. We hear stories about uh, St. John Paul II, you know, st he heroic stories of heroic saints. Mm -hmm. um, but we have to realize that, well, first, God chose those people. And maybe I will become one of them in the future. But right now, in the context, in 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 the situation of a university, mm -hmm. we know that where we are, and a lot of fruit, a lot of fruit takes time to bear. Um, and to see that, um, yeah, we're all trying to do good. Maybe we just have good conversations. Uh, I suppose good conversations is one of the things that would convert people's mm -hmm. hearts. Mm -hmm. You're not having a propaganda behind you. You're not trying to convert them, but in a very sensible manner just bring people closer and closer to Christ mm -hmm. as for Christ he said he, I'm the way mm -hmm. so his way mm -hmm. so what is his way um, charity yeah okay okay and now I can I can now like I can go to let's say a friend in college now and say exactly what you've said mm -hmm. like I can say you know um, that there's something much beyond mm -hmm. um, what, what like what we're doing right now um, mm -hmm. and I can tell them this you know the the reason that you're doing this thing that is is bad is because you see some like a hint of good in it, mm -hmm. um, and for maybe some for some people that may work, and for some people, probably for a lot of people it won't work as well. Yeah. Yeah. Like w what is it that stops people um from making that next step, um and like because it it is obviously very different um especially like obviously with a lapsed Catholic, mm. it's different to someone who, that isn't has has had no experience of the faith as well, um. So yeah, like what 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 is it that's like there that's so so profound that it's able to stop people from um, coming to God? Yeah, I say if we go back to look at um, Exodus when I mean Pharaoh hardened his own heart, or maybe you can someone would say God hardened his heart. Mm -hmm. um, no, not everyone is Pharaoh. Not everyone wants to harden their own heart. I suppose one of the Actually, even let's say pragmatically, mm -hmm. we can scan, right? We can scan people who are has a better disposition sure. to the yeah. faith or not. Uh, I suppose, <coughs> in the real sense, we start with them. We start with the people who actually want to do good, who actually hard work. They're hard working. They're sincere. They're genuine people. They seek. They they have no presumption mm -hmm. of your faith or you associate with any any groups. Um, I suppose pragmatically, they're the best place to start with because people are naturally disposed to do good. Sure. Now, what's stopping them? I suppose a lot of things stopping them. It could be their family, it could be their friends, it could be their lifestyle they don't want to lead, or they're leading, mm -hmm. rather. Uh, it could be the fear of judgment. Uh, it could be a lot of things mm -hmm. uh, that's stopping. But I, I suppose that's, that's a beauty about one-to-one -one, uh, friendship, relationship. Mm -hmm. you know? Relationship, one of the things that we forge the most. Yeah. And uh, I mean, the other thing about this, right? Because let's say the the thing that you treasure most is your relationship with your significant other or your parents or your siblings. Uh, well, why is why is relationship so so pure and so such a treasure to our heart? Is that well, if we look at the Trinity, it is relational, mm -hmm. right? And 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 that just sets out, let's say, the boot prince of all uh, human flourishing just based on relationships um, so I suppose like the best friendships 
take place uh, with the best dispositions. Mm. Um, and rather than figuring out, oh, this is stopping that person from doing this, I suppose what you have to find is, does that person have the right disposition? Uh, I suppose disposition is 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 the is the is the liberation of the heart. You know, you're free from attachment. You don't have, you don't even have preconceived notions. Mm-hmm. No. Um, of anything, you, you're not presumptuous. That's what it really comes down yeah. with. Uh, and start from there, and see. Well, you know, you know, we see plenty of friendships happening. Uh, I mean, Tolkien was good friends with uh, C.S. Lewis. Mm. You know, uh, even uh, I mean, a lot of friendship happened to be like the uh, the I say the the tins of uh, conversion at the beginning. So, I would say like yeah, disposition disposition is a good way to kind of you you scan that and then navigate okay. to the friendship. Cool, um, and one one of the and one of the things you mentioned there was we can often uh, approach these problems with other people, um, that that don't have the faith necessarily with the attitude of, I oh I'm better than you, um, and so immediately that just it says to me that like the biggest thing that needs to be addressed right now is yourself mm. um, and and your own kind of thinking yeah, yeah. Um, like is there a way that you can yeah address that um, and address the way like you can or like change the way you're thinking about um about like yourself, yourself uh, so that you, obviously you can then become a better person to to yeah. um to approach that situation i suppose it's funny don't be afraid to be the don't be afraid of your inner critic. And I suppose the second thing is, um, don't be afraid to correct y- the, the self from the yesterday. Mm-hmm. So um, and if we're willing to change, and we're willing to be better, uh, w- and we acknowledge that we are sinners, mm-hmm. then we should be able to say, yeah, I messed up you know, yesterday or last week or last year, mm-hmm. and that particular thing. And if, you know, thinking back, I, I w- certainly wouldn't do that at all. Sure. Um, and realizing that, I mean, we're, we're sojourners and we, we, we're, we're generating, I mean, even, eventually to e- eternal Jerusalem is mm-hmm. where we're going to. So it's a pilgrimage of heart. And I suppose it's, that's the beauty about CBT and um, cognitive behavioral therapy mm-hmm. is that you think and you behave differently. You only think. It's not CT, it's not cognitive therapy, mm-hmm. it's not behavioral therapy, it's not everything conditional, uh, but you think in a way that helps you to behave in a different way, sure. and yeah. you just get into a virtuous cycle. Okay. And you change your behavior, change the way you think. Okay. Uh, I say that it's the best way to start with okay. addressing okay. the problems. Yeah. Just And then one thing that just out of curiosity um, is just something I wanted to know is kind of the psycholo- the the psychology behind mental health and um, because that is something that is y- it's seen everywhere yeah. in, in colleges across across yeah. the world and yeah. um, more so that there is a bigger emphasis being put onto mental health and mm. the awareness of mental health yeah. um and so yeah like w- w- why do you why do you think that like it, it it almost seems like it is all of a sudden that it's become such a yeah. such a big issue, yeah. um, especially as it seems like colleges are the most fertile ground for it as well, um, and what why why do you think that is? Why is there such a surge of awareness, or uh, or or even like do you think that that surge of awareness is is actually warranted, um, with and uh, in terms of like is it actually necessary in college? Mm. Um, and if so, like why? Why are people? Yeah. Why are so many people suffering with mental health issues? Yeah, yeah, it's an interesting one because I I think we kind of touched upon it last mm-hmm. uh, in the episode I did with sure because okay. uh, and since I've been actually thinking a lot about you know the whole mental illness thing and like why there's so many you know people suffering from mental illnesses nowadays and I suppose it probably is not just a uh, as consequence of more aware because I I kind of thought that would be the primary index uh, primary consequence of the awareness but the more I think is that well if we look at classroom nowadays in primary school secondary school uh, we see people actually struggling mm. uh, in in terms of learning sure so and what you can ask okay why do they struggle with learning so much 
or it could be a physical thing. You maybe mm-hmm. your eye eye is not you know having the right prescription, etc. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then maybe and then later on we see going to the late teens and young adults, people are struggling. I suppose the one of them, I suppose the biggest challenge now for let's say young adults and late teenagers are looking for to do what to do in college I suppose that's the biggest decision sure you know yeah. uh, it was my first biggest uh, decisions to make um, back you know when I was 18 going to college I suppose many people I suppose are not uh, well equipped to do to make that uh, decision yet mm-hmm. um, and they're being forced I would say to do to make those decisions that they are, don't have the let's say uh backing of let's say the support or the or the mentor mentoring of them so um and i'm not saying that no one nobody should go to college and only mm-hmm. those who really want to should mm-hmm. go to college etc but it's just maybe that support network nowadays a big with the awareness of mental health is more becoming more prominent and it's actually a good thing yeah that uh people realize that well we need support and everyone needs support sure. yeah and um it's good that it's realizing now. I suppose I don't think colleges nowadays. Oh, uh, oh, do we, do we have more like kind of uh, resources on seeing sure. therapists yeah, or yeah. like mental yeah. health week and etc. For sure. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, there yeah. M- most definitely is. Yeah. Because it's like <clears throat> I'm sure you mentioned it before, but it's like a. It's it's the next like going into college is the next logical step from yeah. from school, yeah. and so there is a lot of pressure on people mm-hmm. because of that, and um, like. The, the, when I was in, I'd say maybe at, at least ninety percent of my 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 school year, um, in in like my secondary school, mm. actually ended up going to college. Mm. Um, so these are people that you've spent the last six years of your life with, mm. um, and are likely going to be your friends for a while longer. Yeah. And if all of them are going to to college, and then you kind of stay behind, and you say, well, "I want to take a year out to try to figure out what I want to do mm. in college," even though for like psychologically that probably is the right thing to do right if, especially if you if you if you're not sure and you yeah. don't really know what you want to do if you don't even know if you want to go into college that's probably the right thing to do but that pressure that mm. you feel from just everyone else going to college it, it, it kind of yeah. it, it bears a lot of um just yeah a lot of hardship for for the person making that decision mm-hmm, mm-hmm. so um yeah that's i think that's and, and as you mentioned there's there are a lot of supports um in college at the moment yeah. um with things like because college is a very stressful environment it's it's a very competitive environment i think that's where a lot of it stems yeah. from as well yeah. um and yeah it, yeah so it definitely it's interesting is one. yeah it's a competition element in college is actually um i don't know how conducive it is mm-hmm. in the grand scheme of thing uh absolutely not i suppose there should be s- a, some uh some elements of competitiveness within you that's just pushing you towards making yourself a better mm-hmm. you know making yourself more fulfilled and achieve your potential your hidden potential etc sure. but uh oh is everyone ready to unlock that potential that's another thing right for sure so um i suppose a support network at the end of the day is really important well it could be a, it could be a friend who are, it could be a friend who is just five years older and giving you direction maybe in a, in terms of professional point of view I'm just starting my career. Mm-hmm. I'm looking out for those who are five years ahead, who finished their PhD, who are starting up girl or their own company. Mm-hmm. You know, those are the people I try to connect with. Sure. And I, I suppose one of the things is a fear of, um, of the, the fear of asking. You know, asking stupid questions is. Right. I mean, for real. Like, I mean, why Joe Rogan got so big all of a, not all of a sudden, but in the past, let's say four years, is that he's willing to bring the big boys mm. onto the stage. In this room and just ask questions like sure. oh yeah. i don't know what is this what does that mean uh i suppose when you're 18 i mean when I, i'm 26 but i know nothing virtually uh so i suppose people have to willing to find out or to realize that you, we are nothing mm. i mean that's really come down to what we human are and going sure. back to you asking about catholic and non-catholic as well at the end of the day we're dust and to dust we shall return so just really able to to put that in your heart and really seek the truth cool. and willing to approach everything with a noble heart mm-hmm. and try to push yourself is it's just uh, i suppose um 
and that mentality is how you actually grow mm -hmm. the best um we can talk about all the strategies and techniques of reframing and how different therapies therapeutic approaches etc but ultimately is to have your identity really rooted in what in who well sure. people can find out their own yeah and, uh, if you have a better kind of more conflicted identity then you navigate through life's yeah, way easier sure or i suppose well it, not sorry not easier but you'll be comfortable in the suffering that you encounter okay yeah. okay that's really cool man um, we've unfortunately run out of time Obviously. but that was an amazing first episode uh, we yeah. covered a lot yeah. in it um, and there is there is like psychology can be brought into so many different things um, right. and I'm sure you'll delve into them um, in the further ep in the next okay. couple of episodes Absolutely. as well yeah. um, but if anyone would have any questions for Sam or has any feedback for Sam um, on either things that um, questions that we on the stuff we've discussed already or questions that you would like to see discussed in, in further episodes do get in contact with us uh, you can text us on 089-467-2000 uh, you can call us on 014-123456 or you can send us an email at info at radiomaria.ie so um, yeah Sam thank you so much man it's been Brilliant. a pleasure yeah, God bless thank take you care. very much